Hello everyone, I'm Greg Otto with FedScoop TV. Welcome to the eighth annual Lowering the Cost of Government with IT Summit, and I'm talking with Mark Schwartz, the CIO of Citizenship and Immigration Services. Mark, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. So we've heard of cloud for a while now as a way to drive savings. Is that still the case, or are there other trends that we should be looking for when it comes to driving savings? I think there are a lot of trends that we can be looking at, but I, I can't stress enough how important the cloud really is. Okay. Um, a, a lot of people are focused on the immediate cost savings, you know, comparing the cost of hardware to the cost of, uh, of using the cloud by the drink. Really, the big cost savings, I think, are in how much the cloud lets us speed up everything that we're doing. Okay. So it saves costs on um, system development time, on system uh, remediation and things like that. It lets us very quickly respond to an agency need get something there without having to wait for hardware procurements and all the other things that take time, and uh, be able to get feedback on how it works, be able to quickly course correct, uh, and really meet the agency's needs very precisely. That has a lot of value, although it's a little bit more difficult to measure sometimes. Okay, so how have you seen agencies, and maybe you have some stories about what's going on in your agency as well, actually saving in the long run when it comes to modernizing and upgrading your systems? Uh, I have an interesting take on modernization, really. Okay. So, um, first of all, uh, I don't know that we always modernize things to save money. That's not okay. necessarily the, the intention. We have to keep modernizing our systems to keep up with everything. You know, right. Keep up with context, keep right. up with what the agency needs to do, keep up with priorities. Um, keep up with technology and new possibilities and so on. And so for me, modernization should almost never be a sudden project where you suddenly modernize things. We should be constantly modernizing. Right. And uh, in fact, we have to be because the longer you hold off on making changes, the more divergence there is between what you have and what you really need. And there's always a hidden cost to that. So I think of modernization more as an ongoing thing in some cases, it helps reduce costs. In other cases, it's providing you what you need to run the agency. But in either case, you can't not do it. OK. All right, interesting. So there have been a lot of policies and some legislation that has come out in the past 18 months with regard to federal IT. What other sorts of policies and legislation do you think needs to happen in order for agencies to be able to keep modernizing systems and keep lowering the cost? of keeping their systems up and running. Mm -hmm. um, there are a couple of areas that I think are really interesting right now. One is, uh, if you think about the new user-centric or customer-centric approach to digital services, where we want to get out to the public and we want to get their feedback and try right. things and see what works best for them, um, what we need is a quick way to solicit uh, public input by actually showing them what's possible, getting their feedback, making changes, and going through a feedback cycle like this. I think uh, a lot of the way we've set things up in the past has been around printed forms where you create a form and do a lot of review of it to make sure it's going to reduce the burden on the public right. uh, and then launch it. Um, where now with digital forms and digital interactions with customers, it is very effective if you can quickly collect feedback and try new things. So I, I think we need to look at policies that make that easier for agencies. Um, that's, that's certainly one area where I would look. Um, okay. uh, look for um, policies that might, might uh, support us well in doing those things. Okay. So when it comes to purchasing tools and, and services, um, it's often a race to LPTA, lowest price, technically acceptable. Mm -hmm. um, with cybersecurity being such a huge concern, how do agencies balance low cost with finding effective solutions? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that our cybersecurity difficulties come, <coughs> excuse me, from LPTA. Okay. You know, I, I'm not sure it's uh, that we're not spending adequately. Okay. Uh, I think the responsibility for cybersecurity is really on the government. Uh, we make, we're the ones who make trade-offs. We're the ones who say, um, contractor, you should work on this rather than working on this. What we need to do is make cybersecurity a critical priority of everything we do in addition to producing functional capabilities that, that run the agencies. Um, cybersecurity has to become 
uh, almost a habit. You know, there, there's uh, in the agile world, there's a movement called rugged DevOps, uh, okay. which proposes that we build things in a way that is rugged just because that's the right way to do it, you know, resilient and secure and so on. And when programmers start program programming a system, they're already thinking about how to make it secure. When we engineer the cloud infrastructure, we're already thinking about how to make it secure. Security is just part of, it's almost an aspect of quality, you know, just like we try to avoid bugs in code we try to avoid security vulnerabilities, and that should just be normal hygiene. Right, okay, okay, interesting. So finally, how do things like open source policies and shared services and API help agencies find an efficient and cost-driven way to stand up their systems and, and work within their systems in a modern way? Yeah, it's a powerful model. Um, and, and really becoming a standard generally uh, outside of the government as well, right. that a lot of things are built out of open source. There's a very vibrant open source community that is uh, in many cases developing very, very high quality software. Uh, and not only that, but software that most uh, technical people know, are familiar with, know how to use, uh, and it's just part of their skill set to be able to use those tools. So uh, not only does open source software save us money uh, just in avoiding licensing fees in some cases, in some cases not, in, in some cases we actually get support from a proprietary vendor as right. well and pay for that, but uh, in general we can reduce licensing fees, but we can also uh, increase the velocity of delivery by putting together, piecing together different open source components and quickly building solutions to the agency's needs. We can uh, rely on well-tested code because it's used in so many places uh, and reviewed by so many eyes in the open source community. So the, the savings uh, are quite powerful on a lot of dimensions there. Okay, great. Well, Mark, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate your insight. All right, thank you.